People have long dreamed of moving to California, but increasingly the people in the state are looking to get out. According to recently released data from the U.S. Census, about 38,000 more people left California than entered it in 2018. This is the second straight year that migration to the state was negative, and it's a trend that is speeding up. Every year since 2014, net migration has fallen. California's income tax revenue, about 70% comes from the tax returns of about 150,000 multi-millionaires and billionaires, most of them in the entertainment and IT industries. If that's correct, then the state's government simply doesn't have to care about what the middle and working class think, and whether or not they leave the country, as long as they can keep those 150,000 elites on the side. So if California continues along this road, in a generation's time, we will have a state consisting of tech billionaires and illegal immigrants making less than the minimum wage, and almost no one in between. As far as I can see, the people in power have no desire or incentive to prevent this from happening. As the middle class, excepting those who work for the government and other public sector institutions tend to be conservative, then from the Democrats' perspective, the more of them that leave the state, the better. Californians are also leaving in droves because of fires, taxes, and regulations. The demographics are illuminating. The middle and upper classes are fleeing, taking their capital and skills with them. The incoming are poor and unskilled. You can see where this trend will eventually lead. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. California, the fifth largest economy in the world, has long been a magnet for many reasons, exploding economy, incredible beauty, air and weather, fantastic wildlife, countless places to visit, and things to do, friendly people, etc. In its heyday, before the 90s, there was not a more beautiful or perfect place on earth to grow up. However, today, California suffers from a myriad of enormous problems which seem to be getting worse every year, thus causing many people to move on to greener pastures. First and foremost, California suffers from a tremendous housing shortage and astronomical housing prices. Rentals start at about $4,000 for a one or two bedroom, and depending on where you live, and you will probably pay even more for a studio. To top that off, the Chinese are coming over in droves, and they outbid everyone, pay top dollar, no haggling. Not many people can compete with the unlimited cash the Chinese are willing to pay. The second issue is taxes. California residents pay more in overall taxes than just about any other state in the nation. That includes income tax. Third, the U.S., generally speaking, is a nanny state. Well, you can multiply that times 10 in California. It's exhausting. Fourth, traffic. There is no public transportation in California. No, I don't include BART as public transport. Only people who have never experienced real public transport will say that, and traffic is horrendous. 15 years ago, it used to be that you could travel at certain times during the day or night and be assured of standard traffic patterns. Today that is no longer the issue. Traffic is bumper to bumper nearly all the time. You have to travel between maybe midnight and 3 a.m. to drive unimpeded in places such as the Bay Area, San Francisco, Los Angeles, etc. People who live on the outskirts of the Bay Area where housing is more affordable get up at 3 to 4 a.m. to face traffic and get to work by 8. That's not a life. At least not one worth living. Fifth, the cost of living. Going out for dinner for two people without alcohol or starters will cost you about $100. That's a familiar place in a typical town in the Bay Area, San Francisco, Los Angeles, etc. Prices, of course, are higher or lower depending on the restaurant or location. Sixth, yes, California has a lot of great places to go and things to do, but you will a pay out the nose to do them. B, deal with crowds and parking. C, make an appointment and buy a ticket in advance, sometimes months, for many attractions, and D, face the traffic to get there. 7th, there is a real water shortage problem. This is exacerbated by ridiculous water policies set by the myopic powers that be. For example, water for agriculture and residential areas are, in many cases, funneled away to water the vast amounts of golf courses throughout the state leaving residential areas and farmers penalized for excess water use. That means no greenery for homes, which have postage stamp-sized yards, and fewer crop yields, or none, for farmers, or they pass down the cost to the consumer, thus giving the average shopper about 20 blueberries at a price $8, higher if you want organic. 8. Crime, it's a real issue. While I was visiting a friend in the Bay Area, there was a shooting across the street from his home. 
A week later, after talking to one of the reporters covering the issue, I found out that the house was being used as a bordello and a stopover for sex trafficking. This was in an affluent residential area, not the projects. She stated that it had become an epidemic throughout the state. I also got my car broken into while out to dinner in Palo Alto. Bastards took my favorite sneakers. Ninth, an exploding illegal immigration problem. The growing numbers of immigrants to California have put massive pressure on its already overburdened resources, and the outrageous taxes people pay are reflective of that. Tenth, wildfires and earthquakes are a real concern. Not only to life and property but dealing with the everyday stress of these disasters makes for people who have constant jitters. Have you ever shaken a table with your knee for fun when you're sitting down with some Californians? Or asked someone if they smell smoke? They're all on constant semi-high alert. Especially the ones who lived through the serious quakes, wildfires in Los Angeles and the Bay Area, San Francisco. It's exhausting to be in that mental state all the time. The wildfires seem to come out of nowhere and move at lightning speed, try sleeping when you know fire could be surrounding your house while you sleep. I know many people who left the Bay Area after the 89 quake. With months of aftershocks and delicate nerves, they just picked up and left. Same with the wildfires in Southern California. Only not worth it to a lot of folks. The population's still growing steadily due to immigration and the national birth rate. We may have just hit 40 million. Lack of population size isn't exactly a problem. And domestic migration to California is still massive. Domestic out-migration has been happening for decades. This story's not new. The reasons behind this are where things get quite interesting. Number 1, 25 years ago, out-migration was mostly happening as a result of the cultural wars that California was fighting internally. Similar to what's currently happening at the national level, California had to make a conscious decision to move forward in being a multicultural, liberal state. It wasn't a pretty scene, but the result was definitive. Hence you had a large number of people leave the state for political reasons, and they made other countries such as Idaho more conservative as a result. These people have entirely left California behind, they think it's gone to hell, and are not interested in importing any of it where they are. Keep in mind that many of these people were only one generation removed from having migrated from the South, and California wasn't really a tribal home, to begin with. Number 2, emigrants today are moving more for economic reasons, as the state's just damn expensive and competitive. This group mostly moves to settle down. They spent formative years in California, and generally speaking, believe in and still love the state. They're bringing contemporary California with them where they moved to, look at the recent election results in Nevada, Colorado, and Arizona. Californians are mostly moving to other cheaper western states, like Texas, Arizona, Nevada, Oregon, Washington. According to an analysis from the Sacramento Bee. As housing in California continues to skyrocket in expense, it increasingly makes sense to leave. According to the real estate company Zillow, the average house in California has risen from about $300,000 in 2012 to about $550,000 in 2019. Those numbers have scared many families out of the state. Where are people coming from California? Mostly colder places, but also places with more diversity like Hawaii and Florida. Even though it seems California has a large economy, it also has a lot of debt. Some Californians, for some reason, seem to think increasing taxes will help the debt problem, but it just doesn't work that way. Illegal immigration also burdens the economy and exacerbates the debt in the long run. It will worsen things if we have any more move towards universal health care policies here. Whenever examining places that nationalize industries, like Venezuela did, it only seems to worsen debt problems. California residents are taxed to death. Sure it certainly has a lot of beautiful things, it's not all bad here, but, the air quality depends on where you are. If you're somewhere like Los Angeles, from a distance away, you can see a transparent layer of smog hovering above. With everything so heavily taxed and expensive, it's hard to live here. There's a growing number of homeless and unemployment because of lack of housing, and you're likely to need at least two jobs to sustain yourself. More people having multiple positions increases unemployment, that's why unemployment increased after the ACA 2010. You can especially see this in places like LA and around San Francisco. It'd be nice to have more homeless shelters to help people get back on their feet, but getting back on your feet will only take you so far if you can't afford things. 
Sure there are fun things to do, but that's if you have the money to do them. It's very unfriendly to business, so they don't have much reason to stay and help with the debt. It's way more beneficial to do business elsewhere. Some say weed could help the debt, but weed doesn't exactly make people more productive and causes poor memory, plus it's not like Colorado's economy is booming, actually since 2014 crime has been rising in Colorado. A lot of people still think that continuously increasing the minimum wage will help everyone pay for the increasing expenses, but that doesn't work that way either. The more businesses have to pay each individual, the higher retail prices must go to help pay those people, the money has to come from somewhere. Crime is going up, like in our Latino communities, too, including more drug dealers, etc. Increased illegal immigration hurts lower income families, jobs. If you're rich here, the more money you make, the more gets taken through taxes, but if you're poor though poor is relative in US terms, and work minimum wage you need two or more just to support yourself and or a family, but that's difficult when much of illegal immigration takes lower income jobs. Fires are pretty big here. Most of them are caused by people being careless and or dumb. The drought isn't fun. Not a place you'd want to retire in. I know people who move out of California to retire because of those funds getting taxed, even if they loved living in California before. And here is a crucial detail about the domestic migration numbers that most official statistics miss, they ignore international migration. For example, a software engineer moves from India to Silicon Valley, works for three years, he takes a job in Texas. From a domestic migration standpoint, California has lost one person. From a total population perspective, California has not lost anyone. A Guatemalan economic migrant comes to live with his cousin in East Los Angeles. After 14 months, he moves to Ohio to work in a restaurant. From a domestic migration standpoint, California has lost one person. From a total population perspective, California has not lost anyone. This is important because California has two massive international gateways, each of which sees tens of thousands of legal and illegal international arrivals each year. Many of them do not stay in California forever. The bottom line is that California is the center of the universe on so many levels, and for so many reasons, I often wonder if these issues are purposely not adequately addressed for the sole purpose of keeping people out and getting people to leave. The state can only take so many people, after all. Regardless, due to the exponential population growth we face today and the inability of politicians and planners to come up with modern, valuable, and substantial solutions, I doubt we'll ever see any improvements or solutions to the issues destroying this beautiful jewel of a state. That's why people are leaving. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.